Well, hello friends, how are you today? Thank you so much for joining me. This is Amy Ferlici from the Gathering Inspiration Stamp Studio. And today, oh my goodness, I am having so much fun playing with my Stamparatus. Uh, this is a tool that I, um, it took me a little while to get comfortable with to be able to do a video, but I am ready to go now, finally, right? So I cannot wait to get started and show you how to use your Stamparatus. If you have not used it yet, or if you're not feeling comfortable, I'm going to help you do that today. And then also I want to show you a bunch of, excuse me, a bunch of products that we used on this video that are from our annual catalog. So I have to tell you, I basically cased this card from our annual catalog. So I'm going to show you that right now. This is our 2018-19 Stampin' Up! annual catalog. And you will see on page 40. Can you see that super cute card? So I obviously changed up the colors and maybe did it a little bit differently. But when I, I even circled it here because it talks about using the Stamparatus with this stamp set. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is, this is it. We're going to do this. We're going to make a video and I'm going to show you guys. They even kind of give you a little peek of the Stamparatus right there in the corner of the catalog. And then here's the super cute stamp set that we are using. It's called Around the Corner. And basically you can stamp all of these images kind of in the corner of your projects with this cute stamp set and then kind of do some layering of some sentiments there to make it even more fun. So I'm going to show you, like I said, how to use your Stamparatus and how to make this super cute card. A little bit different color scheme, but same basic idea. So let's go ahead and get started. I will tell you, um, let's see, I'm going to give you dimensions of things and then we're going to do our embossing of our vellum, which is my one of my favorite new, it's not really new, but to me, I haven't done it very much. So I am loving this technique of embossing our vellum and then we'll get going on our Stamparatus. So uh, sizes of dimensions, let's show you that first. So we have our, this is a card base. Um, uh, Highland Heather is our cardstock today. So we have our eight and a half by 11 card base. We cut it in half at four and a quarter inches and then we scored it in half at five and a half inches to make our nice crisp fold on our card, right? So I'm gonna scoot these kind of up and out of the way. Then we have a piece of super duper cute. This is the Highland Heather um, designer series paper. Polka dots on one side. We're gonna use the stripes today on this side. This piece layered on our card base measures four by five and a quarter inches. And then right over top of it, we are going to put our piece of vellum that also measures four by four, four by five and a quarter inches, right? And then we have a piece of Whisper White cardstock that measures three inches by three inches. Okay, and then we just have a couple of scrap pieces of paper or kind of extra pieces of paper that we're going to do our punching. So we'll do that so that we have that all ready to go. So I need a vellum, um, like this is the smaller of our two balloons in our um, balloon bouquet punch. And then I need a larger polka dot um, Highland Heather. And, all right, I gotta make sure I don't lose these little pieces, right? And then one more. So this is a piece of, um, what is it called? The Twinkle Twinkle Designer Series paper. So you can see super cute Twinkle Twinkle, right? With the little stars, pool party in white. And then this is the back side of it, kind of a really pretty navy blue with some fun designs on it. So we're gonna just punch one of these. And, oh, this happened and I wanna show you guys this. So when this is in the locked position, it won't let you punch all the way through and you're thinking, oh no, my punch is not working. So mine is a little bit loose. You can see it kind of goes back and forth really easily. Just push it up into the open position and then squeeze again and you'll be able to get your piece punched right out of there. So that's just a little trick. We have we run into that issue at classes and things and people think, oh no, your uh, punch isn't working. But it's just that that's a little bit loose on some of them. So, okay, let's do our embossing next. So I'm gonna grab my Big Shot here, right? And I have my Big Shot platform. And we are going to use, this is the Scattered Sequins Dynamic Textured Impressions Embossing Folder. And I've got my little note here that says to use one clear cutting pad because it's one of our thick embossing folders, right? So 
You don't want to break your big shot and try to run it through with both of our cutting pads. We just need one of them. So I'm just going to put my vellum right inside there. And it doesn't even matter if it moved. It looks like it already did move. As long as it doesn't come out of the sides of the embossing folder, we're fine. And then just put one clear cutting pad on top. That's all you need. Crank your handle and it runs really kind of easily and smoothly right through our big shot. And then, oh my gosh, I love this. This vellum, isn't that so cool? So you can kind of see my hand. It's kind of like a little, um, I don't know, shaded, masked um, look to it, I guess. So very, very cool. Okay, so I think we can break out our Stamparatus now. Oh my gosh, I am so excited, you guys. All right, I gotta make sure I don't lose my pieces though. So I gotta, I gotta stay organized, ladies. Okay, and did I move my, I think I did move that a little bit. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna grab my Stamparatus. Actually, that's not gonna work. I gotta move that card out of the way. Okay, so this is our Stamparatus. There is one uh, door on here right now, and I've already positioned my stamps, and I'm gonna show you how to do that as well once we get started. Um, you have your little template right here with your ruler on here if you need to help um, place images or, or your paper. Um, let's see, the one thing I will tell you guys, um, uh, maybe a couple of tricks anyway, when you go to stamp or ink up your stamps, this, um, and this is <laughs> my chamois, which I use all the time as well to kind of clean things off here, but it's a great surface to kind of, when you open this up to ink up your stamp, kind of keep it level on here and just kind of instead of it flopping um, down too far right oops I think I have to move it a little bit because my stamps kind of get in the way but there now it's very even so I'll be able to apply even pressure when I'm inking up my stamp now because these are photopolymer stamps I've learned a couple of tricks first of all I think you almost need a little bit of a shim to kind of raise it up to get a good stamped image so I like to put my little silicone craft sheet right in the corner there as well. And then you definitely need to use your black uh, kind of foam mat that comes with your Big Shot. Basically, it's got the foam um, as if you were using red rubber stamps. When you use those, they've, it already has the foam in the stamp, right? So you don't need this foam piece here, but because the photopolymer stamps do not have that foam mount, we need to use it on here. So we're gonna just pop that right in the corner there as well. Then, oops, I should have showed you this first maybe, but okay, so we're gonna kind of flip this closed. The other thing you need is one of your magnets that you store right on the back here. You do not ever want these to get too close together. I don't even wanna like, you know, put my hand too close together right now because they will come together and they can break basically. So you use only one of these at a time. They're super strong, so you do not need to use more than one. So use one and the other one is your backup basically. As soon as you're done, Using this, make sure you put it right back in there too, and you can feel the magnetic you know, force that it helps hold it right in place. So you're not gonna lose these things either. The other thing I've learned is don't put them, don't put one magnet on the table and then the other one on the table because they will come together and again, they can break. So just be really careful with that. We do have replacement magnets for sale if you ever forget and something happens. So not to worry, um, but you know, try to avoid it if you can, right? So we've got our three by three piece of Whisper White cardstock. I've already got that one all ready to go. So I'm gonna put my magnet down here because what we're gonna do is we're gonna ink this image up and then we're gonna stamp it right in the corner there, okay? So I have my black Memento ink and just kind of carefully, it's a little bit harder when you're doing it right in the corner. I'm gonna do another video to show you. They really recommend whenever you can to put your cardstock kind of in the bottom two thirds of your Stamparatus, that that um, is a little bit easier to stamp in that area. So because it's right in the corner here, near the hinges um, and the corner, you wanna apply quite a bit of pressure. I'm really, I'm pressing pretty hard with my thumb to make sure that all the ink that's on that stamp comes off. And that looks beautiful, right? So next step, I need to move my magnet kinda up in the corner here. And can you see this is like, uh, oops, let's make sure that's good in the view there, right? So we're gonna lift this guy up and we're gonna flip it around, right? So pop that back in place and then we're gonna flip that back like that. So now we can ink up our next stamp. So this is the stamp that says, it's your day. And I can see, I've already, I'm gonna clean in just a sec. I can see I've already gotten some ink 
right in the corner here. You probably, you maybe can't even see it, but it's really black right there. I can see it. So, okay, so we're gonna flip this down. Oops, actually, you know what? I need to move my magnet a little bit more so I can get my full stamped image. Okay, so again, I'm gonna apply a good amount of pressure here to get my ink, and I'm not pressing anywhere else except right where my stamp is, right? Okay, now, there we go, awesome. What I, what I was gonna say was sometimes when you go to lift your stamp up off of here, this, the photopolymer, because they're a little bit sticky, might move your paper. So just make sure that you push it back into the corner and put your magnet back down so it's back in place. So, okay, now we need our other door here. So this is the idea. We're going to put that on there. And I have already been playing with this, but I want to show you guys how to actually position these on here. So I would have done this with all three of these. I had already done it previously, but this is the idea to get started in your stamping. So you see how you kind of move that around. For me, the hardest part is putting it in place and then getting my fingers off of it without it moving because it's a little bit sticky. Um, but I think we're good. So we've got that position where we want. So then we flip that down and then we pick it up, kind of press with our fingers. And again, if, if our paper moves, which it looks like it kind of did, that's not a big deal. Just move it back in place. Those photopolymer, because they're sticky, right? So just get it right back in the corner, get your magnet back on there. We're gonna use Highland Heather ink. So just kind of nice and easy. I've heard um, if you have ink spots, those are wonderful to use. And a reason to get paper pumpkin. Oops, can you guys see me doing that? There we go. Let me move that into the line here. Yeah, paper pumpkin, whenever you get those cute little boxes in the mail, they give you the little baby ink spots. They're only about that big. So you can see why it might be a little bit easier to ink up your stamps with um, those little ink spots. Okay, so we're still in the view. I'm gonna flip this down and then I'm just gonna press nice and easy. I wanna give a good amount of pressure um, to make sure all my ink comes off. And then I pop it up and voila, look at that. Perfect stamping, right? Perfect placement. So I am loving this Stamparatus. So that's the basic idea, right? Um, I was gonna check to see, I have some notes here, make sure I didn't forget to tell you guys about anything. Oh, I know, the one thing that I wanted to sh share with you was I like to use my chamois. I think it's really kind of a quick, easy way. Like, you know how I said I got ink kind of over there in the corner of the hinge? And then even, kind of just use it like a little cleaning surface. We can clean our ink off of there. Oops, that's not even my stamp, is it, right? Let's see, we'll scoot that back up so you guys can see, right? So I can see I got a little bit of ink there. So I love this, just being able to kind of clean everything off so it's all ready to go, right? You, the other thing, oh, this is perfect because I almost just did this. You wanna never, ever, ever try to close both of these at the same time. Can you see how that only goes down naturally? Oops, everything is moving on me. Um, about that far. So you never want to close both of these at the same time. You just lift this out and then keep it um, stored separately. Okay, you cannot fold both of those down. They will not lay flat down there. Um, what else? Oh, the other thing I was thinking of to make sure you guys think about is obviously holidays are coming up, right? So can you imagine how quick and easy it's going to be to do your stamping? You know, multiples, if you're going to make 100 Christmas cards, just put your paper, um, you know, get it lined up, get your stamp lined up, ink it and stamp, put your next piece in, ink it and stamp. It's going to be super fabulous for that sort of a thing. Um, I think that's really about it. The main thing is just to make sure you apply enough pressure because that was kind of a thing that I learned the hard way um, was not applying enough pressure. So when I went to stamp, all of the ink wasn't coming off onto my cardstock. Not really a big deal because you can just re-ink it and put it right back down and it's perfect placement, right? So anyway, isn't that awesome? I am just loving my Stamparatus. So we're gonna pull this piece out of there and we're gonna scoot this guy right out of the way, right? And what else? So I think we can put our card together now. Ha ha ha, I love this super, and I love these colors too. The um, Pool Party and Highland Heather. I think it's such a pretty color combination. Okay, so actually we don't even need that card base. We're gonna use that in a little bit. So. Oh, I know what I did was I built this guy first. So we're gonna put our um, balloons on our card. Where is my, I need my dimensionals, there we go. Okay, so actually we're just gonna use snail adhesive 
Let's put a little bit of adhesive right on our first um, little balloon. We'll put him maybe right about there. Now I want a dimensional behind my blue one. I want to pop this guy up a little bit. Oops, my dimensionals are being funny these days. It's almost like both sides come off, so it's not sticky, but that's all right. We'll get that figured out. We're going to put another balloon right about there. And then the other thing that I learned, so the vellum, where's my vellum? Oh my gosh, there it is. It's almost hard to find him, right? So I like to use this tear and tape as an adhesive, just a little strip of it on my vellum, because what I found is that you um, can see, let me make sure I'm gonna put that on the right side, yep, that you can see the adhesive. Like when you use your snail adhesive, it's almost like it shows through. But this tear and tape, I don't know if it's a little bit more clear or something, so I'm rubbing really well to get that applied on there, and then I'm gonna peel it off, and then we're just going to Kind of adhere that maybe right about there so it just kind of floats and you really can't even see it which i love then let's see now we're going to adhere this whisper white piece to our vellum because this was my trick right i didn't want i don't want to see adhesive behind my vellum either so I built this all put it on here so that now I know I only want to add adhesive in these areas right here because if I run adhesive down here on the vellum again um, you'll be able to see it you could also use your tear and tape to help apply it but I have found that this works really well just like this too so we're just gonna apply that right on there okay then we're gonna add some more adhesive we're gonna put all of this, the whole fun shebang right on our card, right? Now we have one last step. We have our silver and white baker's twine, and we're just gonna actually have a little bit of a strip already cut off here. So what I found was it was easiest to, and this is gonna be a little funny, right? Um, how did I do this? I adhered, I put a little bit of adhesive. I wonder if I did it before. Now I can't even remember, because. but I think this will work. Yep, if we just run a little, because you just want a tiny little stitch of adhesive um, to hold it back behind these guys, right? So I'm gonna put that one right there, and then I'm gonna cut that down, and then I'm gonna do one more, and I'm gonna press him right behind there, and then trim him off, and then, I liked to use my little mini glue dots to kind of hold those little strings in place because they're just kind of hanging right there. So I'm gonna grab a little mini glue dot. Oops, I, I almost grabbed it, right? And I'm gonna put it maybe right about there. And then I'm just gonna kind of have some fun with these guys. I'm gonna make one go that way and one go that way. And I wanna get them right on there so that they kind of cover up my glue dot. Right, I'm gonna trim that guy off just a little bit. And there we go. So isn't that so cute? I love the vellum, the embossing. I am having so much fun playing with the Stamparatus. Hopefully this video inspires you to pull your Stamparatus out and play with it if you've been hesitant to um, so far. But you're, you're just gonna have so much fun. You just have to get started and get playing with it. That's my advice because it took me a really long time to feel comfortable and you just have to pull it out and start playing with it and do it, right? So thank you so much for watching today. I hope you all were inspired today. I hope you enjoyed this project. Um, make sure you check out my blog at gatheringinspiration.com. I always have a host code on my blog, right? So it's on the right-hand side toolbar. When you use the host code and order online at my website, um, you always, so I'm doing Facebook Live videos now as well. You can catch those on this same YouTube channel, the Gathering Inspiration Stamp Studio YouTube channel. But the awesome thing is when you shop online, use the host code from my blog, you automatically, with at least a $30 order, that's it, right? You get the projects that I demonstrate on Facebook Live that week, and your name goes into a drawing to win the giveaway that I do on Facebook Live. Then if you bump your order up to $50, you always get a free embellishment in your thank you card. So there's so 
so much good stuff you can get from me as a thank you for an order. So hopefully you enjoyed this project. If you'd like to purchase any of the products, make sure you go shop online at my website at amysuzanne.stampinup.net and use that host code from the blog. So thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this card. I hope you were inspired and we'll see you soon. Bye everybody.